Hi, welcome to this month's Learning with Loading program. Uh, this month we're going to be talking about some of the mental health supports and social emotional supports that we have in place for our students in Nixon schools. Uh, the, the program we have will cover a lot of different topics and resources that we have in place from borough to our own social workers and, and psychologists that we have that work behind the scenes. Also we have behavioral support programs and other things that are in place to help meet the needs of our children and we're excited about being able to present the overview today of what we have in place. And as always, just a quick reminder, the videos that we produce when learning with loading are all archived on YouTube. So if you miss one, you can go back and look at some of the other topics that have been covered. But enjoy this month's program. I look forward to seeing you at a learning with loading soon. Hello and welcome to another edition of Learning with Loading. We're excited to kind of show you some of the, the student supports that we've got in place here at Nixa and give you a better idea of how um, we initiate these programs and implement these programs across the district just to make sure our students are taken care of in, in multiple situations. And joining me here today is Isaiah Holgerson, who is one of the peer leaders with Sources of Strength, and Carrie Stormsen, who's a counselor here at the high school and also one of the sponsors of Sources of Strength here at the high school. So um, I guess to start off with, um, just kind of give me a brief overview of what Sources of Strength is. All right, well, Sources of Strength is a really peer-led program that is focuses on help, hope, strength. Um, it's preventative, it's upstream, it's really taking anything hard and having students pivot and look at what are their strengths, what are their areas that they can you know, gain from when going through something hard and training peers to help other peers in yeah. that and uh, adults as well. So, yeah. so, so Isaiah, I guess with, with that, as a peer leader, what is your role in the Sources of Strength program? Yeah, so we are really the people who go out and get the dirty work done. We're really the people who are out in the classrooms talking to the kids, talking to the teachers. Um, and that's one of my favorite parts is it's very student-centered and very student-led um, rather than just something coming from down top. We're all involved in this um, community building exercise almost where we're all growing closer together. So my role, I'm in different star classes, teaching them about things um, on the wheel of strengths that we've talked about, um, different supports that they have like family and gratitude and spirituality, um, and kind of drawing us all together as we have a greater conversation about um, the things that we can run to when we need to run to something and um, building that community where we're always safe to run to those things. Awesome. So Carrie, he referenced the wheel, like this wheel. Yeah. Um, and so what, get, kind of give me an overview of what this wheel is. Sure, sure. So it's exactly like that. It looks like a big piece of the pie. And so the wheel has all different pieces. And I think Isaiah just mentioned some with generosity, um, family support, mental health, physical health, spirituality, um, positive friends. Um, they are all a piece of that puzzle. And really what it boils down to is we can't get through life without, you know, experiencing one of the three big emotions. And when we talk about the three big emotions, we talk about anger, anxiety, sadness, you know, no matter what, you're not getting out with that. And so whenever you're feeling one of those, like, what do you do with it? I mean, yeah. we're human beings and we're emotional beings. And that's part of you know, life it's experience. Just too real. Yeah. 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 And so we like to help pivot and like turn to that wheel and say, okay, where, where, how are you getting through this right now? Like, what can you do? Where can you pull from? And so we have different campaigns and activities based on that wheel to help promote basically positive mental health and well being for yeah. all students, adults, faculty, everyone really. So I say, I guess, so with the way you're explaining that is, is, you know, when something bad happens, because yeah. something bad is going to happen yeah. and we're going to all react to it, it's to find, and everybody's different, so not everybody's going to have the same strength buckets, I guess you could say, yeah. as everybody right. else. So it's teaching the students to figure out where their strengths are and how they can access those, dif access those different like buckets of strength in their life um, um, to when something bad does happen, that would be the place they can run to for that strength. Is that a good kind of summary yeah. of what it, that yeah. would be? It's just, um, it really pr promotes like positive like student activity, making good ch healthy choices mm -hmm. really. So like for me personally, I know that I've looked at the wheel and seen, okay, these are some weak spots for me. Mm -hmm. These are really strong. I can know I can always run to these things. So while it can seem very like 
impersonal and out of touch. It becomes very real when you start thinking through things. How does this apply to my life, situations I've been in, and situations I'm walking through at the moment? So I guess the idea would be is to show all students that they do have, everybody has yeah. a, stra- a strength source that they can run to no matter what happens and, and really help them to maximize on, on that. Would that Absolutely. be good? Okay. Absolutely. So I know you, you guys have talked about like different student campaigns and things you're going to do. What what are those things going to look like? Like What are you going to do to, to highlight this to, to the students in the school? Um, so we have lots of things in the works. We're a little new, so we're still <laughs> trying out um, different things, making making all the kinks um, ease out in the system. But um, we're running a thankfulness campaign as we speak. So students are writing down three things every day that they're thankful for for 21 days, the scientifically proved method to rewire your brain to look for the positive. Once again, just encouraging students that there's more to life than the situation that you're in, how real it feels, and that type of stuff. So just encouraging them to move beyond that. And then we've got some future things coming up, too. Yeah, yeah, and absolutely. And to just piggyback on what sources is and to make it more than just, like, a program. Like, mm-hmm. I like to say it's really a practice yeah. um, because it's not really an additional program, what we're doing. And we're trying to connect as many dots as possible. And we are in the midst of a generosity thankfulness campaign right now. And even Dr. Kelly has looped in teachers mm-hmm. with that so we can really identify and tell our students thank you and point out the positive in something – you know, so we recognize all students, yeah. um, and I think that's really important. And teachers have really gotten on board to do that with even one one another. And yeah. so, great opportunity. Um, but campaigns basically are opportunities to spread the word and like have different pieces of the wheel or just different activities to really focus in on that foundational help hope strength no matter what time of the year it is so for example at um after we start second semester our next campaign is on mental health Um, and so we actually now have different campaign teams Mm -hmm. Um, so we actually have our next two campaigns lined out Um, we have a mental health campaign team that i will actually be leading and then following that's a positive friends campaign that's going to be led by another counselor then we'll end the year with two other campaigns and so we're actually giving students opportunities Opportunity because we also want to teach balance um, because there's different seasons of time that we're busier than others. And, you know, we have that as adults and we recognize our students do too. We have athletes, we have band, we have theater, you know, we have sources of strength is for all. It's, it's a belonging. We, yeah. we want all students involved, no matter, you know, if you're a straight A student or a big, you know, or if you're not involved at all, like we want you, we, you know, you belong. Yeah. Like, that's really what our focus is, is a sense of belonging and community. And so with our campaign teams, we are also giving students an opportunity to say, okay, January, February is a good month for me. So that's my team. Like, that's the team I want to yeah. work on. Yeah. And so that's really helpful. So, like, here at the beginning of the year, we're going to do a whole mental health campaign. And really, it's student-led. It's like, they're the pulse of the school. They know what we need. Yeah. They know, like, those pieces. My team already is, like, wanting to have some community involvement. Mm-hmm. And so some of the, you know, the students on my peer leaders that are there, they're already like, can we try to reach out to businesses and things like that and let them know? I'm like, absolutely. Yeah, so it's community. That's one, of the, that's one of the coolest things is just there's a lot of freedom and sources of strength. You aren't tethered down to one thing. So like I know for me personally, when we first came in, it's like, okay, what are you interested in? What are you passionate about? How can we use what you bring to the table? So when we say that we ask for all people, we aren't just saying that. We aren't just saying that for numbers even. We're saying that as we do that, we're reaching more corners of the school with a positive mindset. We're growing together as a community. So it's a really cool environment. And everybody can find, you know, they can speak from a personal experience on what their sources of strength is and connect with each other to, you know, to really identify that, and maybe they will find through that maybe another friend or another person yeah. that can be a source of strength within that organization. If they don't have something on that wheel that they think about, they will find it within the organization. I have so. to say that's one of the, like, greatest pieces that I've experienced. I mean, there's so many great things because we are, like, if someone reaches out and say, hey, so-and-so mentions they want to do a source of strength, I'm like, awesome, tell them to show up at our next meeting. Mm-hmm. Show up. Yeah. We're, yeah. For, we're for you showing up. Oh, yeah. But I've also heard so many students communicating with each other like hey I've heard your name or maybe we're on snap together but we've actually never had a conversation and now they're friends and they're hanging out outside of school which is phenomenal but they don't have a class together they would not normally see each other within these four walls Mm -hmm. so it's really you know more about connect connections and like having you know building those bridges that you know those opportunities are now presented for all students 
Well, we want to thank you all for joining in and just to hear a little bit more about Sources of Strength. Be watching for all of their programs and the things that they're going to be doing um, in quick news and on our social media. Um, and just really uh, reach out to the district if you want to know how you can support this program as well. Hello and welcome to the second part of our video, just highlighting a lot of the different supports we have in place um, here at Nixa Public Schools. And so we have got social workers here with us today. They're a lot of fun. They are awesome people. But we're going to first let them introduce themselves and then kind of give a little bit of history about uh, their experience in social work. So go ahead and go for it. Hi, my name is Regina Hauer and I'm one of your social workers. I have been a social worker. Um, well, I guess I graduated with my master's degree in 2001, so 20 years mm -hmm. about, but I took about 11 years off to be a stay-at-home mom. And I've worked a lot of medical social work. I also worked at the Children's Division for a few years. I worked um, with Missouri Alliance. I've worked in dialysis. And my last gig was about three and a half years in hospice. So now I'm at Nixa. Awesome. Welcome. I'm Jen Finke. Um, I graduated with my MSW from Mizzou in 2006. And so I've done a variety of settings as well. I've done um, Children's Division. Um, I've also done foster care, adoptions work. And um, I guess I was working in a school for a really long time as well, doing um, a school-based clinician job, but not directly um, hired for it, like working for the school. Um, and my last gig was at Burl, and I worked there for about three years, and I did school-based clinician in Branson. What is, like, what is a social worker? Like, what does that job entail? I think social worker is like a lot of different hats. I think that a lot of the things that we do here at the school is a lot of problem solving. So we really try to bridge the gaps um, and f figure out barriers. So like one of the main things that we really want to do is make sure families and students have what they need um, physically, mentally, um, mm -hmm. you know, food, shelter, uh, making sure that we can link them to those resources. But then also for us, we are kind of unique in that we also have our licenses, so we are licensed clinical social workers, yeah. which means we can really address that mental health piece. So we can, I think it's great that we've been added to a team of people that are already working together to really fulfill the needs of the students, but we can add that extra support where we can link them to resources, but also address those mental health concerns as well. And I think that everybody who works at Nixa schools, our main goal is that we want every student to have a really good education and be successful. And I think that sometimes, like Jen said, there are barriers in place to being successful. And so that's kind of where we step in. If a child is having like extreme anxiety and maybe can't go to a certain class, we kind of step in with resources and support, like mental health mm -hmm. and um, other things just to help them be successful. So our, I think our main goal is just like we want children to be able to be successful at school. So really what you do is, is very individualized for each one of the students. Absolutely. Because every student, all 60, 700 students are yes. different. Yes. And so they're all going to have very specific needs. And have you seen the, those needs also evolve over maybe the year, maybe something that is some at the beginning of the year is a need for them, then as you go into other seasons throughout the year um, or just different months, those needs evolve and so you're there for additional resources. Is that Would that be a good summary? Yes. Yeah, I think that, you know, as the, um, even as the semester progresses, you have more anxiety um, as mm -hmm. far as like test taking Absolutely. or grades go. So just being able to talk to the kids and, and really partner with the, um, the counselors at the schools and say, mm -hmm. hey, here's some kids that are really struggling. What can we do to really get their coping skills up and figuring out what they can do at the school? Who are their trusted adults that they can go to? Mm -hmm. um, I know that we have our office at the high school, so we, our doors always open. And a lot of times kids just come in for about 10 minutes, yeah. talk it out and then say, hey, I'm going to go back to class. So, I mean, really, that's what we've seen mm -hmm. a lot happen, and we've gotten a lot more frequent visitors at the end of the semester. <laughs> whenever Absolutely. those, whenever those, you know, it's crunch time, I guess, you know. There's a lot, I mean, there's a lot of, and, you know, there's a lot of those stressors out there from, like, test taking, but all those, those holiday stressors oh, sure. or yes. those, those family things or those things that maybe you don't realize are going to be triggers, yeah. you know, Mm -hmm. that impact the school. It has nothing to do with school, but it's impacting school. Exactly. And I think that one thing that we really wanted to focus on was building relationships, not just with the counselors and the administration here, but also with family. Mm -hmm. So they feel like we're an extra just layer of support for them. If something does happen, like if a child, maybe they lose a grandparent, we get a heads up the night before, so-and-so might be upset tomorrow. And then we're able to step in and tell the whole team, you know, this is what's going on, but we're going to check in with them after third hour. And then they have just have an extra support and some grownups that they, more grownups at school that they can trust. Yeah. 
So if, if somebody is wanting to inquire more about your services or, or how you can help, like either the student or, or their child or, or mm -hmm. whatever else, um, how do they go about that? Do they contact you guys directly? Do they contact the counselors? Like what would be the best way to, to inquire about connecting yeah. with you guys? I think recently how we've gotten connected with families is just um, if there's a, a school counselor, they'll, they'll say, hey, there's this family that has this need, this particular need. We'll yeah. reach out. Um, but also families, it's, it's been a, kind of a beautiful process because we've started with families for a particular mm -hmm. circumstance, and then they've reached back out to us and said, hey, we have this need. Like, we yeah. need winter coats for our kids. Or and more able. You know, we so already have the relationship, so we can just step in. So they can reach out to us both as well. It's, it's both ways. Yes, it's both ways. So and we and um, administrators reach out to us uh -huh. a lot and say, you know, we're having this situation, and maybe there's something else behind it. And so then we're able to step in and do Great. So we'll just yeah. tell people, just contact your school. Absolutely. And yeah. Connect you with their, in the right way with the right people. Yeah. Uh, they're really good about, you know, uh, getting people uh, together. So mm -hmm. um, I guess, it's, so you're really just, you're there as a connection piece. That's what I'm hearing. Mm -hmm. To make sure that the students and the families with whatever that barrier is, w mm -hmm. with whatever the situation is, mm -hmm. you're there to bridge that gap yep. and yes. help them be successful. Mm -hmm. That'd be a good summary. Yeah, right? absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So um, I guess what is uh, the one thing about social workers or social work that maybe people get wrong or have a misconception about or, or anything along those lines? <laughs> I think people get the wrong. When they hear social work, it's always like a, it's a negative They think that we're there to take their kids away, but really or, or that something negative, is like, not at all. Not at all. I think, yeah. again, we're just there to problem solve. We definitely feel like every family is different. We understand. We do not judge. Um, mm -hmm. We understand that it's 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 a hard it's a hard job to be a parent. It's a hard job to be a student. Absolutely. So just figuring out individualized needs and, and figuring out how we can make them be successful. Because especially with the pandemic right now, you know, anxiety and depression, mm -hmm. and and grief and loss are huge, huge right now for the um, any student in Nixa. And so just being able to say, hey, you're not alone, and there's some coping skills that you can learn, and we are more than happy to help you with that, so. Well, and I know when my dad died, like you don't realize where you are in the process. Absolutely. Until, and so you need those people yeah. you can reach out to. Mm -hmm. And so having having you guys there just to be like, hey, you know, how you doing? Just, mm -hmm. And you may not know you're not okay yeah. until you go, oh yeah, I'm not, you know, like, yeah, I'm yeah. not okay yeah. today. And we've had a lot of times where we've talked to just parents on the phone about one certain thing, and then it evolves into a discussion about grief and loss because everybody's grieving mm -hmm. something. and. At, towards the end of the conversation, they're like, I'm so glad I talked to you. I feel better now. Great. And I really feel like that's a way that we, this is the reason this job is so great is because we're actually helping people. Mm -hmm. And you can see the outcome. You can see that people are like, thank you so much. I, this helped. So great. Yeah. Well, we are really excited to have you guys here at Nixa. And do not be afraid to reach out to your building to get connected with our social workers. They're, yeah. they're there to support. They're there to help you, um, and they're just another layer of this uh, student services that we're really trying to put into place to make sure every single student finds success here at Nixa. So tune in next time for another edition of Learning with Lily.